How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Friday on the program, you know what that means. We had a lot to get into here today. Dave Meltzer joining us in the second segment of the show to talk the newest edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, which you can check out on the front page of WrestlingObserver.com. We'll talk about all the stories here today. There's a lot to get into, including the update on Cody, Seth Rollins, WrestleMania, and more. And, of course, we've got a lot of news here as well. WWE honoring the late Shad Gaspard as part of the company's 2022 Hall of Fame ceremony. In the latest Observer, Dave reported that Gaspard will be named the winner of this year's Warrior Award. Gaspard died in May 2020 after being caught in a rip current while swimming at Venice Beach, California. He heroically saved his son by directing rescuers to help his son first instead of him. It has been reported elsewhere Shad would be the winner of this year's Warrior Award. Those in WWE have confirmed that to be accurate, said Dave. He's part of the Crime Time team with the JTG and WWE. Outside of the ring projects included acting and writing. So he is on his way to the Hall of Fame, in addition to The Undertaker, Vader, and Charmel. The show's taking place at American Airlines Center following the SmackDown show on Friday, April 1st. So essentially they're doing SmackDown, and then after SmackDown ends, going right to the Hall of Fame. So not two buildings, not two nights, both of those happening on the same night. So we'll tell you more about the Hall of Fame. Triple H who has officially retired as a result of his heart issues, we'll get into that here today. Dynamite ratings, Tony Khan talks Ring of Honor, Impact Wrestling, and more. As noted, Cody, we've got the SmackDown lineup for tonight. Butch, and so much more. Stick around, everybody. Back in a moment, Mike Semper Vivi joins us. Wrestling Observer Live. Um, and a clip from an extended interview with ESPN Stephen Smith that will be released later on Friday. Triple H said that he is done in the ring and nearly died during last September's cardiac event. As far as in ring, I'm done. I would never wrestle again. I have a defibrillator in my chest, so it probably wouldn't be a good idea to get zapped on live TV. In September 2021, he suffered what WWE called a, quote, cardiac event that Smith later said was a genetic heart disorder. Levesque said his problem started when he had viral pneumonia and inflamed lungs, and it got increasingly worse when he was recovering at home. He said his wife, Stephanie, saw he was coughing up blood and was told by medical personnel shortly thereafter to head to the emergency room as soon as possible. Levesque explained that a good ejection fraction of the human heart, which is a measurement of the percentage of blood leaving your heart each time it contracts, is between 55 and 60%. When he was told to go to the ER, he was at 30%. At the time he was admitted, he was at 22%. I was in heart failure bad, he said. Later saying it dropped to 11% by the next morning when he was getting more tests. I was nosediving and at the one-yard line of where you don't want to be for your family and your future. He got emotional when talking about the real-life consequences of his situation, especially with three young daughters. There are moments when you are putting you out for stuff and you think, is it it? Or they're putting you out, and you're thinking, is this it? Do you wake up? It's tough to swallow. It makes you think differently about life. It doesn't make you any less driven for the things you want to do, but it certainly makes you appreciate the things that you have, your friends, and your family. The full interview is going to be airing on Smith's ESPN Plus show at 5.30 Eastern, which would be 2.30 Pacific. So if you want to check it out, you can do that this afternoon on ESPN Plus, but uh, no Triple H wrestling at this or any other WrestleMania, it's looking like. And I don't think anybody should be too surprised by that. It was pretty reported to be very serious at the time. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's a he had one hell of a career and everybody can debate it, you know, and his relations and how that may have helped him and all that other stuff. But it's a He's a integral part of that 90s attitude era and what came after it and where we are today with WWE because of who he is and marrying into the family and all that sort of stuff. And a good uh, it, it, this for him, too, is 
a high profile way to go out being on Stephen A. Smith's show. I don't know on ESPN Plus what kind of audience he gets, but I know who Stephen A. Smith is and how big of a name he is. So, you know, this airing at 530, maybe getting, you know, attention on other sports centers. And I'm sure because of that, maybe other outlets also pick it up because I'm sure WWE probably issued press releases and things like that about it. So, you know, a a big send off in a way for for Triple H here. And, uh, you know, sad. I'm sad for him. But with that said, he had a very long career. And in fact, he had a career after his career in the wrestling ring, not only in the, the professional side of the business, you know, coming back for Saudi Arabia, having the ability to come back for one offs that, you know, so I I don't cry for him that it's over. It is a you know, it, it's a time to either celebrate him or uh, depending on if you're Bret Hart or somebody like that. That, uh, I guess celebrating the fact that it's over. Wednesday is AW Dynamite. 1.05 million viewers on TBS, up 5.3% from last week. Third highest audience total for the show thus far this year. 0.41 in 1849, which is up 8%, tied for the show's third best rating in the category. Third on cable, trailing two NBA games. Head-to-head NBA game, 1.4 million viewers, 0.49 in 1849. Ratings up in every single demo category. Biggest increase coming in 18-34. Dynamite drew a 0.30 in that demo, which was up 20% from last week. Show's best number in 18-34 since the TBS debut. So there you go. At the end of the day, the thing that uh, affects AW. WWE, Raw, SmackDown, whatever. The thing that affects these numbers more than anything else is, it's honestly, it's not your lineup. It's not what you announce and when. It's the competition. And if competition is strong, you're going to suffer. And if competition is not strong, you're going to succeed. And uh, it was a weak night in terms of competition, so here we are. 1.046 million viewers, 0.41 and uh, as long as uh, as long as that happens for both companies, they're going to be doing fine numbers when they go up against South Park, NBA, NFL. That's when things go awry. Below deck Mediterranean. Below deck Mediterranean. What are those other stupid shows? <laughs> Forged in fire. Yeah. Oh man. Hey, thanks, Jacob. He's. Uh, gifting subs to everybody on the uh, the oh. Twitch right here. See, that's what happens when I don't wear a hat. Somebody comes in, starts throwing a, a celebration. I think it had nothing to do with your hatless state. Oh, yeah. Mushroom Man 674 here in the uh, Twitch portion of the chat telling me I'm controlling my hair narrative. I mean, Thank you, you are. You're not wearing a hat. I'm not. No. I do Fresh like God. how your uh, your hair is, is brown and your beard is white. It's, uh... <laughs> Why, does it, why nerve, does it fade pal. out the lower you go? What do you mean? Your chest what, hair beard? totally white? No, I've got a gray sweatshirt on. Oh, that's not your beard. Yeah, I'm wearing a what? I'm wearing a gray underpants. Oh, that's what, why this? my hair looks like this. No, the rest of the hair on my body is is still brown. It's just the really right here and on the the sides a little bit. At least I'm a you know, little fine. bit. I'm fine showing my. I'm fine. You with look who like I Santa am. Claus. You're the one out here coloring your hair and coloring my way, hair. By the way, I want to find white. a picture. I want to find a picture to put up. You know, I want somebody to put it up and find it because I think you did an appearance somewhere here recently Uh. where you looked like you had an old school, like 1980s helmet of newsman reporter hair. It looked like Ted Koppel. Yeah, it's the exact same hair I've got on right now. No, it looked extra there. Did you put some sort of product in that? A product? No. You're changing since all this Patreon money's coming in, not Patreon money, your your cameo money's coming in. I'll show you the difference right now. Same thing. How long did you color it for and try to hide it? What are you talking about? You did. It's whiter. And actually, it's it's a lot less white than uh, a lot of people claim here. Mm. It's actually right here. It's all white for some reason. Right in the front. Hanalei's going to just kill the rest of that. You know it, right? She probably will. I'm surprised it's not already. Although I'll say this, I always wanted to have like a full head of gray hair, like John Forsythe or somebody, somebody with like that awesome, like Kevin Nash, Kevin Nash, full head of silver hair would look awesome. And it's like, well, I, give I, it I'm time, brother. To, I've started to lose it a little kid. bit here, though. 
You have another, like have another kid in the middle of another pandemic, and it'll be uh, white before you know it. No, then you'll be bald. That's the problem. The stress will get you. Look at me. Tony Khan gave an update regarding Ring of Honor Women's Champion Deanna Parazzo, who is under contract to Impact Wrestling. Khan was on the Strong Style YouTube show, was asked why or what was going on considering both the Ring of Honor and Impact Wrestling. They're both holding pay-per-views on Friday night. Parazzo is booked for the Impact Show in a Champ Champ Challenge. Is that what it's called? Champ Champ Challenge? Is it sponsored by Checkers? Where she will defend either the Reina de Reinas or Ring of Honor title against a mystery opponent. Tony said, when Deanna won the Ring of Honor title, when they booked that match, I did not have an agreement in place to buy Ring of Honor yet, and was not booking the matches. With them having a show the night of our pay-per-view, I'm not sure how it's going to work out. Scott Demore and I are still talking about that because I completely respect their position that they have an event that night, too. He's announced, an- announced a handful of matches for Supercard of Honor, which begins at 8 Eastern, while the Impact Multiverse show starts at 10 Eastern. I question the wisdom at that time, maybe, of doing a match where there's a possibility of someone taking the belt of another company that's running a show the same night. But again, now I'm doing the booking. So we'll see how that shakes out. He's already figuring out, all, booking all these promotions is not that easy. Unless it's all a work to get people interested in what's going on and what maybe could happen. He said he would love to have Perrazzo in Ring of Honor. He would like for her to defend the gold on the Supercard show. However, I don't want to put her in a tough position where she has to wrestle twice in the span of a few hours. But that could happen. Scott and I are still talking. We'll have more on this later on. Dave Meltzer joins us. Talking Cody, newest Observer. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Um, Dave Meltzer joining us here. Newest edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter up right now. WrestlingObserver.com. You can sign up. You get... All of our podcasts, the podcast library, 13,000 episodes, back issues of The Observer, and the new Observer every week, about 40,000 words of news and information, analysis of uh, pro wrestling. And uh, Dave, you've got a story here, obviously, about WrestleMania, which is coming up in about a week now. And it uh, looks like Cody and Seth still on. Well, I mean, that's been the match that's been slated for a month or longer, you know, so... Yeah, it's still on. Everyone in WWE thinks that it's happening, and uh, we'll see. I mean, uh, you know, that's that is you know those are the matches that are on the books. You know, sometimes they change. Um, a couple matches have changed this year, but that one has not been one of them. Well, if we uh, if we go by Raw, that would mean that they need to kick off Raw Monday with uh, with this angle because Seth said the match the show is not starting until he gets his match. At WrestleMania. Perhaps. I mean, again, we've heard talk that it may be one of those things where it's just a surprise. And like the Hardys, you know, that was the exact description given to me. So um, not that it's going to be that, but that that's been talked about. So we'll have to wait and see. I mean, uh, but yeah, that's, uh, you know, and obviously some close to Cody have different stories. So we'll have to wait and see. Dave, just out of curiosity, when it comes to WrestleMania rolling up on the season, uh, they've done, because of COVID, they've done a lot of cinematic matches over the last couple of years. And it's something that, you know, AEW, everybody has dipped their toe in and some people have hung on to it. Other people have, it's gone with WWE. How much do you think we'll see, especially because it, they they do fill a lot of time on these shows with things that aren't wrestling. And could we see this be the case with Austin or with Rollins and Cody or with something like that? With Austin, no. 100% no. Um, he's going to be in the building on Saturday. Or, or, doing... or I guess let me ask, too, it, or a hybrid of that, which they've also done before. Yeah. I, um, what was it? Uh the oh, the match in uh, Los Angeles with Roddy Piper and Goldust, right? Oh, yeah, actually, yeah, that's a, even a well, better example. I was thinking more of the modern kind of stuff, but yeah, that's even yeah doing something even like that where something it either goes in or out of the the arena. Yeah, yeah, you tape you tape a lot of it beforehand. Get through the you know, cut through the bad stuff and then do a finish in the ring. I mean, you could do that for any of the matches. Um, you know, I I mean, I don't I haven't heard that they're doing that, but yeah, of course you could. Just because of Austin's, again, his condition, and obviously people are talking about he's in better condition than ever, but obviously I, he's obviously well, probably not, been... not not than ever. I mean, I mean, he's, well, for, he's, yeah, he's I guess for... 57, <laughs> but but I've, I've, I've talked to people who were, were with him in the last um, 
week or two, I guess, you know, just very recently. I don't know the exact date, but um, he's in great shape. You know, that's what they told me, you know, so. And I know he's been doing working on his cardio and he's he's a prideful guy. He's not going to go in there and half ass it. He's not going to go in there to stink. You know what I mean? He wouldn't do it. You know, for all the money in the world, he wouldn't go out there to stink. He's going to do the best he can. And, uh, you know, I mean, in limited doses and everything like that, I think. I hope he, he'll be good. I don't, I don't. I think he'll be. He would not want to go out there and do a bad performance. I know that. You know, I don't like to uh, keep pushing this idea that may not happen at all. But uh, between the discussion of potentially putting this this whatever they're doing with Angle and Austin on last Saturday night, the idea that they moved the AJ Edge match to the other show, which means we now have seven matches on one show and only five on Sunday. I mean, I, I still don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that Saturday is an angle shot for a match of some sort with Austin and Owens on Sunday. Anything's possible. I don't re- re- reject that out of hand, but I would say, um, you know, yeah, if they're looking at something to to, uh, to spark Sunday ticket sales, because, um, you know, Sunday ticket sales are behind Saturday. And, um, yeah, and we, that... we had six matches on each show, and then one gets moved, so now it's seven and five. It's uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. But you took still... a match on Sunday, off Sunday, to move it to Saturday. Yeah, but but the matches that are still to be announced, um, like the Cody match, are probably on Sunday, and there's several of those. So that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Hmm. Well, I guess we will see. Triple H is uh, interview today. He's done. You know, I I think that you know we pretty much knew that. Uh, for months um but yeah i know i saw i saw the interview you know i think we knew it was very bad but i didn't know that he actually had a defibrillator that is permanently in his chest yeah yeah well i mean i knew i knew his heart was was real bad and um i knew he was never going to wrestle again i mean that much i knew i mean it was i didn't know all the details but i knew the the basic gist of it and um yeah, you know, it was just, it was sad to watch in that way. I mean, I, I, you know, it's weird because I don't think of from the, from this perspective and and from the day it happened, I never once thought of his wrestling career or even his executive career. I just, you know, thought about him. You know, you're you got three you got three kids, and you know, don't stress yourself. That's all I could. Th- you know, that's the only thing legitimately that I ever have thought about since then. When people go like, is he going to come back to NXT? Is he going to come back to do this and this? And it's like. I just want him to, you know, have as the least amount of stress as possible in his life because his situation is very serious, you know, and, um, you know, it, it, it can't be minimized. We also got a lot more in the new issue this week, follow-up notes regarding the death of Scott Hall. And uh, what else do we have this week? What did you, what did you learn? Well, I mean, just a, just a couple of, you know, different stories as far as, um, you know, the, the Razor Ramon character was actually the second character he pitched to Vince. Um, the first character was a military guy because based on his father, you know, he was a military guy. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of other stuff, his thoughts on jobs, you know, he, um, you know, I mean, he wasn't. He wasn't a guy who would complain about losing, but at the same time, because he had a very strong knowledge of wrestling, there were certain <laughs> times where he thought it was imperative that he won. And, you know, two of those times were um, the uh, SummerSlam, um, or the, the Survivor Series, I should say, the match with um, the first the first big pay-per-view with Flair and him against who was originally Savage and Warrior. And he was going to win that, and then when Kurt Hennig was put in the spot when Warrior was fired, they didn't want to... You know, they wanted Hennig's to win, so they did a DQ finish. And he, he thought this was a time that I needed to win, especially because he was going to be, you know, booked with Bret Hart for the title next. And the other one was with the Austin match at WrestleMania where he felt as coming in, you know, he uh, needed to win that match. Now, he was absolutely, it was on board, you know, when he was going to win is that obviously he was going to lose a rematch to Austin when the time was right to lose the rematch. And he knew that too, and there was no problem with it. But, you know, it didn't happen where he got the win. And I understood, I mean, what was going on, I would not have booked him to win, even though a lot, you know, like traditional wrestling booking, you would say he should win. But for all the reasons that he didn't win, which is essentially that you don't have Steve Austin lose to a guy whose situation is such that he might not be with the company in three weeks, that to me just isn't worth the risk. So, but he was very adamant about that. You know, he thought like I'm coming in. You know, even though it's I'm gonna, you know, it was gonna be some cheat to win, but he felt that he needed that first win. And in hindsight, being that he was fired very shortly after, um, 
it wasn't worth the you know it wasn't worth the risk of having Austin lose to him and then you know he just disappears and you know Austin doesn't get the win back or whatever. But Dave, it, it, what isn't that Scott Hall's wrestling brain and not Scott Hall's reality brain, which? You know, in in six man tag team matches, I mean, he would be the one if it was Hogan and Nash. He would be the worker, and he would probably be the one to take the loss. Like, oh yeah, in, yeah, yeah. Because they're the too protected themselves of, more. Yeah, and in the grand scheme of things of WrestleMania that year, when it was Hogan and Rock, where Hogan was going to lose, and it was uh, Austin and Hall, and it's like Hall's whole career it, it, with the NWO and kind of with it, it was always being able to put somebody over. I understand what he's thinking from a wrestling point of view, but like at that point in his career and what he was, was he nervous in any way, or now showing signs of like a fear, maybe because of his alcoholism or something like that, where the role he has always done that he's always excelled at that's why you want a guy like that like he's he's worried about losing to steve austin at wrestlemania it's, well, it's not it, it, it's because it was his first big match back you know and, and if you're going to be on top using your wrestling brain you want your first big match back as a win you know kind of like i was watching a kid on, on tuesday night and it's just like you beat him in his second weekend you know what kinda i mean like cody and seth rollins at wrestlemania you probably wouldn't want to beat cody that first night in you, well, you, you probably <laughs> yeah. you probably wouldn't and I would not guarantee any finish at all because it's WWE but but yeah yeah like if Seth if well you know well you know look very at, quickly look, I at mean, Bro, look at Brock Lesnar and Brock I was going to say that back. that's the most famous one but I think I think that was kind of like it was almost a Scott Hall thing because if I recall correctly they were like you know we don't know if this guy's going to last like he's going to get angry he's going to quit we may yep. as well have somebody beat him Brock to get Lesner. it over with and then but my th but my thing is it's Brock Lesnar even. Scott Hall would not at that time have moved to one. You know what I mean? So it's like the loss. Well, you know, Scott, the Scott was, great. you know, okay, so here's the thing. Scott it just was like, to me, it's like a psychological thing. Like maybe he showed a real crack there because his wrestling brain's exactly right. But like, it really didn't matter. Well, go ahead, Dave, because we got about a minute. Okay. okay oh, well, sorry. I mean, he, Scott was booked to win that match and Austin nixed it. You know, yeah. I mean, that is that is what happened. So, I mean, that was one of the reasons I think that, you know, he wasn't happy was the sense that, yeah, he was booked to win and Austin got it overturned because Austin had power. Now, at that time, because I, I was very familiar with what was going on, I absolutely thought Austin was right. I didn't think that I thought in that situation, Scott was too much of a risk for Austin to lose to, you know, at, in that at, in that period of time, even though it wouldn't have killed Austin or anything like that. But it's just like. What is the smart move? Like, like the the correct wrestling booking move, if everybody's healthy, is Scott wins with outside interference, which was the finish. But the reality moves, you know, sitting there looking at every piece of the puzzle, to me it was like, are you kidding, wanting to have Scott beat Steve Austin? I mean, I, I thought that the very idea of it was ridiculous. All right, well, we have to do a break. Sorry, Dave, to cut you off, but we are back in a moment with more Observer Live. Incredible how long I've been doing this show. Oh, yeah? There's How always, long is there, it? There's always somebody new somewhere in the chat somewhere. This guy goes, "Why are there why are there breaks between segments?" National Radio, or it's American a, Forces it's a radio, radio Network. It's a radio show, brother. You may be watching the video version, but this is a radio show. Sports Byline USA, Sports Byline Broadcasting. I'm so old. It used to be the Sports Byline USA Radio Network. Now it's the Sports true. Byline Broadcasting yeah. Network. I used to listen to it on the AM radio. That's it's right. True. It's on the mighty 1090 AM. Mm -hmm. Border blasting, baby. Mighty. Not, mm -hmm. not just the 1090. The mighty 1090. Mighty. Then this bloke goes, how come Dave's not on the show more? Dave was the original host of the show. That's why it's called yeah. Wrestling Observer Radio. Yeah. Man's got things to do. He's got many jobs. Then he couldn't Sleeps. take the heat no more. So oh, I took wait over. now. Wait now. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Anyway, let's get some some uh some stuff here and we'll do uh feedback. 425 I already got some stuff. 425-780-7566 is the text message line. 425-780-7566. Brian at wrestlingobserver.com at Did you Brian see Nick Alvarez Wayne last night on Twitter. No, of course not. Sorry. No, I, you didn't. I mean, I saw the clip you sent. Yeah. Did you teach him that? I tell him stuff like headlocks, you know. I'm old school. But I mean, if he would if he would have come to my gymnastics class, I, I would have taught him that stuff. Did but, he teach but the you irony, anything? The irony is, even though I taught gymnastics for like 25 years, I don't even think I was teaching when he was born. <laughs> well, that's true, considering he's you know 
17 now. All right. In the latest Gosh, edition no. of the Observer Newsletter, Dave provided some notes inside on Cody and ticket sale updates. Cody versus Seth is a go. All WWE sources indicate the belief is the deal is done, the match is happening. Any suggestion, any suggestion that it isn't is not the case. There are those close to the situation who are still suggesting otherwise, but one person in WWE called that, quote, silliness at this point. <laughs> it noted that when Veer does finally arrive on April 4th, his character will be changed. Well, you know, <laughs> I mean, it may very well be changed, but uh, this is Thank WWE God plans don't, though. we're talking about, and he's only been about ready to debut for about nine months now. So anything is possible between now and April 4th, including it actually happening on April 4th. But they uh, allegedly will be changing his character, which I think for 99% of the people listening to this right now, they don't even know what his original character was. So it doesn't really matter all no, that much. D- no, do they, they know what it is right now, okay, which is you see him walk out there and he's this, you know, Indian beast or whatever. If you look at this guy's social media... If you look at his social media, like, you know, obviously he's got some wealth and, you know, the hair's good. He's got, you know, pictures of himself in his expensive car just riding with a, you know, a whole brick on his wrist. It's like, you know, (laughs) maybe that should be the character. Maybe whatever outlandish BS character, like maybe you did, you've got a lot of those. You, You keep creating them in NXT. Maybe Veer, who, if I'm not mistaken, he was the pitcher, right? In the Disney movie. Like he's the guy, the million dollar arm, the guy, that guy. Yeah, You want to know why? Maybe just let him be himself. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you why he had a million dollar arm. Because he'd throw the pitch and it would veer. And everybody would be caught off guard and then right over the plate. That's what they call it. That went over some people's heads. That's why they call him veer. It's a curveball to them. No. No, they, it, 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 anyway. The beer of the pitch, it's the, yep. just get, move on. Uh, two matches previewing title bouts for WrestleMania have been announced for tonight's SmackDown. A fatal four-way between Sasha Banks, Rhea Ripley, Zelina, and Shayna will take place on SmackDown tonight. And also Shinsuke Nakamura versus Jimmy Uso. You know, it was only a, a couple of weeks ago that they announced some match with four of the women. Uh, and it was on a Friday afternoon because I talked about it here on the show. And by the time the show started, it was a totally different match. But plans, but see, but plans don't change, everyone. Mm, but see, Brian, we make they, it up when we're wrong. When they announce something late, it uh, gets a better rating. That's what I've heard. Mm, that didn't happen this week. Uh, can you measure that for me, by the way? We also had. Uh, well, that's it. That's what's on the show tonight. It's I got be, enough time to be try to beat you into Two really else. long matches tonight, let me tell you. <laughs> you think they'll have something with Brock and uh, Roman? Possibly. I see. Uh, WWE's Butch. Maybe some boogs. Uh, WWE's Butch appeared on BBC's Mark Andrews, My Love Letter to Wrestling Podcast Thursday to address his name change from Pete Dunn and the SmackDown call-up. When asked about the change in character from Pete Dunn to Butch, Butch said that his name was not his main connection with the wrestling audience to begin with. The thing is with me, whether it's a name or whatever changes, that's not what really endeared me to the audience in the first place, right? I was hoping people go, right? I don't know. Are you right? You tell me. I'd like to think. <laughs> you can read that in a lot of different voices when you're just reading it that way, like, right? Right. <laughs> you, know, it's... you know, right, I don't want to get on this or anything like that, but r- asking right, that's the new um. You know, back <laughs> in the day, people would try to talk and they'd go, um, the thing um is with me, um, whether it's um a name. That's how people used to do it. Now they say, that's not what really endeared me to the audience in the first place, right? Trying to force them into it psychologically, letting them know, or you know. Why do people ask? Right? Is it like a is it like a verbal like button? I got to make no. sure that people like what I'm saying, so I'll ask. Right? Well, it's you know what it is. It's Am I the only ag- one that this drives me crazy? No. Well, it's passive aggressive bait, is what it is. Because do you want me to answer that for you? Like, do you really want me to say, are you right about that? Because you might be wrong about that, and I might have to tell you about that. And maybe you kind of might want to hear that, but you'd look. 
that's probably what it is, you know, because look, people he knew, this is Pete Dunn. This is a student of the wrestling business. He knows where he's at, what's going on. He knows what an opportunity can be. You know, he's not going to say, what's he going to say? Leave me on NXT. They'll just cut him. He likes to wrestle. He, he likes his job, you know, and maybe he wants to try to see what's next for him and hanging out with Sheamus. It's not the worst end of the deal. And OK, they gave him a stupid name, but man, maybe he can actually make something out of this. And if you don't have that kind of confidence, no matter even if you know in your wrestling brain that they may not do the right by you. I mean, you're still, you got pride in yourself and you feel as though you can get over. I mean, damn, isn't that what you want out of a pro wrestler? So, and that's what Pete Dunne is. So him saying that uh, to me, and if I'm reading that, I'm going to take it, not hearing it as him saying to the crowd, right. Like, that's how you are going to treat me. And that's how this is going to be. Now, somebody else can take it as, you know, passive aggressiveness or something like that, but I like Pete Dunne, and there are worse things than being with Sheamus. Now, with other dude... Uh, I haven't even finished uh, what he said I don't yet. know about that. But I'm glad that I'm not the only one that uh, finds that verbal tick annoying, right? I do use right every now and then, but I only say it when I actually want to know if I'm right. You know what I'm saying? By the way, the comparison you just made to that didn't really make any sense, actually. If you, people who say, um, 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 wouldn't that be more akin to people who go like and like and um, like, like, th like that? Maybe, I don't know. But anyway, he says, I'd like to think it's the quality of my in-ring work, and that's why I'm going to keep, and that's, what, and that's what I'm going to keep the same, of course, Right. It's going to get better. It's going to improve as time goes. I've been in NXT for five years now. It's time to change it up and see what we can do and push it forward with a new challenge, said Butch. <laughs> That's what it says right there. <laughs> it's exciting, but it's also a little bit different. I think it's time to change it up a bit. Five years, fresh start. Why not try something a little bit new? See? I was lucky to have as long as I did in NXT, to be honest. There was a time when I felt like it'd be a shame to stop being in NXT Honestly, we always wanted to move on. See, here's the thing with names, everybody. It's all subjective, okay? I know some people are upset that now he's called he's called Butch, okay? But before he was Pete. Yeah. Right? Well, you know what? Yeah, a Butch and a Pete could be in the same like clubhouse gang with a a Seamus and a or whatever. So. I have nothing against the name Pete. I want to make that abundantly clear. Very uh, kind of more old. But well, it's but my apostle. point is, my mm -hmm. point is to me, yes. Pete to Butch, it's largely a lateral move. What difference does it make? Because I'll he tell used you. because he used to be known as Pete Dunn. Now he's Butch. Thing to me is like Vinny Marseglia. This yes. one actually. Gets my dander up. Vinny Marseglia is an awesome name. It's, it's That is an awesome name. Yeah. Coming to the ring, fighting for the championship, Vinny Marseglia. But now he's just Vincent, which yeah. makes me think of the guy sitting alone at a table trying to sell autographs. Well, how do you feel right? about... Vi well, right. How do you feel about Vinny Massaro? Well, I mean... Yeah. That's a fine name as well. Okay. But I, I don't see what everyone's so up in up in arms about. You know, the Walter line is? Gunther. I mean, I didn't like it when they chose like a Nazi, like he was going to be Gunther Stark. Well, yes. Yeah. You know, but if they want to call him Gunther. I mean, he doesn't need his name change. But is it the end of the world that he's no longer Walter? Now he's, he's still, Gunther. Still chopping the hell out of people. And for Pete Dunn, again, at the end of the day, no matter if they call him Butch or not, now his checks are going to say Pete Dunn, and they actually just got bigger, I would assume, being on SmackDown. So however long this lasts, let him ride it out. What? Uh, look, again, I'm sure that kid's got Supreme Confidence Kid. He's got, well, actually, my age, yeah. He's got Supreme Confidence in himself. He's a great wrestler. And the bottom line is the worst that happens to Pete Dunn is they release him, and that would absolutely suck for his bank account. But... He, uh, even in this crowded field, in this world, he could walk into NOAA, New Japan, T, uh, Impact, uh, AEW, Rev Pro. He could go New Japan anywhere he wanted to, and they would have him on the card gladly, and there would be people like Lee Moriarty, Daniel Garcia, everybody, Davey Richards, lining up to wrestle that guy, and people would want to see it. So... 
that's the worst to me that happens out of this whole deal, unless his partner injures him, either one of them, because they can both be klutzes. Well, hey, listen. Someone here, just, they, 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 they get so mad when WWE changes names. You know why they change names, right? It's been happening since 19... But the point of this the is, company before, beginning. before he came, he WWE does not own the rights to the name Pete Dunne. So what they don't want to do is bring Pete Dunne up to the main roster, market his name, license his action figures or whatever, and then one day he walks into AEW and he's Pete Dunne. WWE's Pete Dunne. They don't want that. So they're going to give him a new name. Adam Cole, you know this whole Budge story? I'll yeah. bet you anything it was actually going to be Butch. Huh? Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's very possible. Right, everybody? Right? Yeah. So right. He, he they want him to cut his hair. Because you can't have a long-haired guy named Butch. That doesn't nope. make any sense. It's silly. So this probably was was Adam Cole's main roster gimmick. I mean, mm-hmm. has Butch done any matches, or has he largely been out there kind of as a manager? I'm sure he's going to do matches. But, you know, I'm sure they didn't want to bring up Adam Cole, put him on the main roster, you know, give him whatever, and then, you know, one day his contract is up and he goes to AEW as Adam Cole. It's embarrassing enough that they had the guy in developmental for four years as a multi-time NXT champion, and he walks right in AEW and he's one of their top guys. Question for you and everybody going to break, because I don't know. Was one of the reasons that the name change was made with Rex Steiner is because they already have a trademark on Rex Steiner in the family, so they said, okay, Braun Breaker is the direction we're going to go? Is that possible? I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, they probably figured that if he comes up as Rex Steiner, because his last name is Steiner, uh, or Rex Steiner, or uh, whatever, he could go anywhere else and use Steiner as part of his name. Whereas Braun Breaker is exclusive to WWE. Right? And Vince loves the name Braun. Right? Back in a moment, Observer Live. Yeah, as noting in the chat, they changed the name of Gable Stevenson's own brother. Uh huh. So they have uh-huh. Gable Stevenson, Olympic gold medalist. Or whatever. I forget what he did. But anyway, he's a famous wrestler. <laughs> and uh, he's an Olympian, right? Olympic gold well, he, he could be. He's a multiple-time NCAA, NCAA heavyweight whatever. wrestling champion. Anyway, everyone knows Gable Stevenson's name if you're <laughs> yes. in wrestling. Everybody, uh, but uh, his, his brother, right? his brother's yeah, everyone except me. His brother's in NXT, but his name, his last name is not Stevenson. No. So I hope what they do... It's like, it's like changing Kurt Angle's brother's name. I hope what they do is is Gable Stevenson will be on the main roster. His brother, with a different name, will be on the other roster. And they'll be able to acknowledge similarities, but not actually say who his brother is. Just like with Rick Steiner. Do you, where do where you Rick remember, Steiner, uh, what's his face, uh, Bobby Roode <laughs> did the, the elbow drop and the push-ups, and they have to go... Well, you know uh, who, uh, br- you know, Braun Breaker's family, that's a reverence to me. I was the like, best thing ever, one of the things with Jerry Lawler and Brian Christopher, when they would do that, when Christopher first came in the WWF, and it would, obviously, everybody knew that he was Jerry Lawler's kid, but, like, Jim Ross or whatever would, like, you know, they would hit him with, like, the zinger or whatever to get him back, and he would sell it, and it was like, that was a time where I thought that was always hilarious. I loved when they would do that with those guys. Holy right? smokes. <laughs> I almost made it the last 10 seconds, but then I I didn't. We're out of time, everybody. want to thank you all for listening. Back later on this weekend for subscribers, WrestlingObserver.com. Check out Video.F4WOnline.com as well. Or Video.F4WOnline.com, right? And uh, my Twitter at Brian Alvarez. My Cameo at 4 Online. Mike's got some social media, too. I do. Yeah, just Google Semper Vivi. At Semper Vivi. Everywhere, baby. Talk to you next time, Wrestling Observer Live.